We're bike week 14 waiver wire. It's a very underwhelming week if you have fab to spend. If you're looking to hit the club and ball out, not the week to do it unless, unless, you know, there are. Unless there are. So I just lied to you immediately. I don't know why you should trust me the rest of the way. But you can trust this. That Justin Herbert's going to throw for one fucking passing yard. Prize Picks has an absolutely free square sitting there for you to help you pay the rent this month. They just want users on the platform. They want to suck you in so that you get addicted to playing on their platform. Which is why they're giving this away to you for free. This will be up on their app until Sunday kickoff. All right, They don't play on Thursday. So this is not like a rush to go get it. But if you have never been on prizepicks.com or the app if you're a first time depositor on there use promo code bdge they will double whatever you throw into your account and then boom and the best lines are earliest in the week this is when you could take advantage of the lines because a lot of the time they move people see them they're like that's too fucking easy therefore someone's rushing yardage can go from like 74 all the way down to 68 if we were on the under so now's the time to get in first time depositors again BDGE, when you download the app, first link in the description, they're going to double your deposit, and boom, they've got the free square sitting there looking nice and pretty. Speaking of nice and pretty, that's not what the waiver wire is for this week, but what is pretty is the tuck that I'm about to happen. I don't know why I did that. We're going to redo that. We're going to redo that tuck because that was embarrassing. Everybody behind your screens, please tuck your shirt in. Please stop yelling. Flex your traps. <laughs> We're about to eat. Okay, so there's a trio of running backs that we're looking at that have kind of taken over their backfield. Some AFC East action and some some places across the country right now. I'm talking about in particular James Cook, Zonovan Knight, and Cam Akers. Weird to, to throw Cam Akers in here. Like, even be remotely excited about this dude, but I think you have to be. That's the order I would have them. James Cook low-key took over the backfield in Buffalo on Thursday night. 14 carries, looked explosive, was getting work in the passing game as he has been. I don't I don't know at this point why the fuck they even traded for Naeem Hines. It makes absolutely no sense when they had James Cook there. He's the guy, and it looks like they are using him in a larger capacity than Devin Singletary right now. Would it surprise me if next week Devin Singletary had like 11 carries and James Cook had seven or eight? Not really, but this was the first week that we saw that it seemed like they were committed to getting James Cook more involved, and he just looks more explosive. He looks like a better playmaker, and in an offense like Buffalo, you don't necessarily need to get a ton of volume in order to produce at big levels for fantasy. So James Cook is actually my number one waiver wire pickup this week, and uh, yeah, I would use my number one uh, spot on him if I had him, and yes, I would blow 25 to 30% of whatever remaining fab budget I had. Zonovan Knight's a little bit trickier because Michael Carter suffered a low ankle sprain. So he'll probably be back this week. And they play at Buffalo. So tough matchup. Zonovan Knight has looked great. He has gone over 90 rushing yards in each of the last two games. He has taken over. He's, I mean, he's a big time pass catcher. I think one of the underplayed storylines here, he, he caught five balls on Sunday, is that like anytime we've seen Mike White on the field, he's dumped off two running backs at a crazy level. And we kind of forgot about that because in his first game, not this previous weekend, but last weekend, he didn't really do it at a super high level. So we kind of just like forgot about that narrative, but we're fucking bike, baby. So if Zonovan Knight is going to get 15 carries, if Zonovan Knight's going to get three, four targets a game in an offense that's pretty underrated right now, like Mike White is actually allowing them to score points, Zonovan Knight's going to be like a really solid low end RB2. I think Michael Carter comes back and absolutely plays a role, but I think he plays the role that like James Robinson and Ty Johnson were just playing. Like Ty Johnson just caught, I think, six passes. Michael Carter probably takes that over. I don't think Michael Carter takes a ton of early down work for Zonovan Knight. He seems like possibly the best early down runner they have in this backfield right now. He's tough. He's got he's got the yak going for him. So I really like Zonovan Knight, and he's a dude that I think people will write off because Carter's coming back. They'll write off for a few different reasons, but he, he feels like he's here to stay in this backfield. Maybe not a ton of weekly upside, but if he gets in the end zone, he's probably more likely to give you 15, 16, 17 fantasy points in a given week than just like 9 or 10. So Zonovan Knight, number two. Cam Akers got into the end zone twice last week. Had he not got into the end zone and he was sitting there like 15 for 60 or 17 for 60 whatever he ended I think it was 17 for 60 like 3.5 yards per carry still a wildly inefficient running back right now gets into the end zone twice so we're excited about him is that predictable absolutely not because his offense is going to be atrocious going forward so I try to look at it when it comes to like touchdown equity nice to see that he gets the goal line carries but do we predict him scoring touchdowns going forward no if that's the case, how good is he for fantasy? Not very good, which is why I list him on this bottom tier of the top three dudes. 
you want to own them. They play against the Raiders, so probably a good matchup. They're going to continue to lean on the run because, you know, they don't really have a passing game right now with that Matt, Matt Stafford. So uh, Cam Akers, third guy on this list, you know, 15, 20% of your fabs. on a night a little bit above that. Nico Collins is like one of, yeah, I have Nico Collins, DJ Chark, like Jamison Williams, I guess, and Corey Davis as my top dudes to add this week. Nico Collins has gotten a significant amount of uh, targets. He's clearly the number one with Kyle Allen coming off another 10 target game here. They're inefficient. They're inaccurate. Uh, but he did score this time. So, like, you're getting 10 targets. You could probably be used in a fantasy lineup. So that's why Nico Collins is up here. I'm not going out and, like, blowing everything I got. They play at Dallas, and it's a 17 fucking point spread in that game. So if you have the Dallas defense in your fantasy lineup, you've already won your fucking matchup. So happy for you guys. Hate Steve Onechain for what he did to me this week in the E-Town get down. We'll never forgive him. We'll never allow him to step foot in the office again. Nico Collins can step foot onto my fantasy team, though. Uh, DJ Chark came back. Like, this is his first, I feel like, big game in a while. Jared Goff is rolling. This Detroit offense is rolling. Detroit is a two-point favorite against Minnesota this week. Crazy. 5-7 and seven versus a 10-2 and two team. Uh, Minnesota's pass defense, not very good. DJ Chark is a guy who gets a ton of air yards. So when they are slinging the ball downfield, it's going to DJ Chark. And I have Jameson Williams behind him, but Jameson Williams played 11% of the snaps this week. And like I've been saying, it's going to take him weeks and weeks and weeks to get really acclimated into the offense, to NFL speed, to a full-time player, to a fantasy relevant player. So you need you need him to check a lot of boxes in order for him to be like a really reliable fantasy player for you. And it's a lot of obstacles. It's asking a lot for someone who's, you know, recently off an ACL tear and he's a rookie in this league. So like I get that the upside could be there, but they have a lot of a lot of pieces playing well already to the point where I don't think they need to force him into a really big role in this lineup. Corey Davis does have a really big uh, role in this lineup. Doesn't have a high weekly ceiling, but he got 10 targets, albeit Mike White threw the ball like 60 fucking times. So the actual target share is not massive, but he's running more snaps. He's running more, or he's on the field for more snaps. He's running more routes. He's getting more targets than Elijah Moore. So it seems pretty solidified that Corey Davis is the number two in an offense that's not afraid to sling that fucking Fang. All right. So Corey Davis, not a bad pickup. Greg Dolchich, though, is really interesting because if Cortland Sutton misses time, which I believe he will be with the hamstring injury, I just saw a report that Greg Dolchich is playing more of a wide receiver role. Like they're putting him outside, they're putting him in the slot to play wide receiver, which is huge because you get him at your tight end position. He's coming off the biggest week of his season. I believe he went five for 90. And with Cortland Sutton out, like him and Judy are going to be the only ones that are really targeted in this anemic, disgusting, pathetic offense. But with patheticness comes opportunity. With adversity comes opportunity. And Greg Dolchich is making the most of it. So he is my favorite waiver wire pickup at tight end for the week. They play Kansas City, so they're going to have to score or they're going to have to throw the ball at least to try to score. They probably won't score, but they're going to try their fucking hardest, which won't amount to anything. I also like the Tennessee Titans. I should have learned this after yesterday's video where I tried to pronounce and it was terrible. We're going to just call him Chiggy, Chiggy Oak, Chiggy Oak. Nope, we're not going to call him that. We're going to call him Chiggy Oak Okonkwo. Okonkwo. At least this isn't my full-time job. You know who the fuck I'm talking about? The rookie Tennessee tight end who has made a 30-plus yard play in four straight weeks. If Traylon Don misses this upcoming week with a concussion, I mean, he took a monster, a monster hit. So there's a really good chance he misses time. They have nobody else in this passing offense. He seems like he's like the Isaiah Likely filling in for the top pass catcher. And he's just like, there's no way he could fail outside of, you know, failing because the Tennessee passing offense is terrible. But they play Jacksonville, so it's a good matchup. I think Chiggy is a, uh, an underrated ad this week that as a rookie tight end, I think you could throw. So we have two rookie tight ends that I'm okay throwing into the lineup if need be. Man, after that on the waiver wire, it's it's gross. Like if you're in a super flex league, you obviously want to uh, target Tyler Huntley. If you're in a super flex dynasty league, Brock Purdy is like a massive pickup right now because it is impossible to get starting quarterbacks in a super flex dynasty league. Yeah, I mean a a after Chiggy, like all I have is Ty Johnsons and MVSs, and I have my top like 25 pickups of the week with fab suggestions on the website, which you can go check out at bdge.co. That's where I have my weekly waiver wire rankings up every week. They drop on Tuesday around noon. To Tony will edit this video and it'll probably drop around like 1 or 2 p.m. But y'all get the gist of it. Um, defenses. Let's go over streaming defenses. But before we do that, we must talk about the Felix Gray glasses that are on my domicile right here. Now, Felix Gray produces these beautiful blue light blocking glasses. You might know what blue light is. You might know what blue light blocking glasses are. They're typically orange. They usually have an orange uh, filter. They usually have an orange glass. What the fuck are these called? Mm, I was about to say monocles. You Whatever. They're usually orange and they look really crazy, but Felix Gray makes them 
look stylish. They make you look smart, which is, you know, huge for me because otherwise I look stupid without them on my face. But the more important part about this is blue light is coming from all your screens, cell phones, laptops. I have 17 screens in front of me right now. It makes sure you don't sleep at night well because it tells your body like, oh, there's all light coming from it. If you're in your bed scrolling TikTok at 1 a.m., whatever, it's telling your body that you're up and there's a light and it's hitting you and you're like, you should be awake. It doesn't produce melatonin for you. So these glasses block that light from entering your eyeballs and entering your brain. So it tells them, you know, even if you're looking at your phone late at night, the light is not actually hitting your brain. So you will start producing melatonin and you will sleep a lot better. It helps with eye strain. I'm telling you, if you work at a job where you're looking at computer screens for eight hours a day, these things are a fucking godsend. And Felix Gray is a godsend because they gave us a promo code to give to you. If you use the link down below, use promo code BDGE10, you're going to get 10% off your purchase on Felix Gray. I absolutely love and adore these glasses, and I will love and adore you if you go get yourself a pair of Felix Grays. Let's talk about defense. So we've got like four or five good pickups this week, in my humble ass opinion. One, you have the Raiders, who wreaked havoc last week on the defensive line. So they're playing the Rams. They're at L.A., and the Rams are wildly banged up on offense, obviously. So it's basically like the first string defense of the LV. Raiders, who pressure the quarterback as one of the best teams in the NFL against an absolutely destroyed, decimated Rams offense. Cincinnati against Cleveland. Deshaun Watson looked terrible. The Cincinnati defense looked really, really good against Kansas City. And Mahomes held him and Kelsey to one of the worst games of the season statistically for them. Uh, Seattle playing Carolina. That's pretty fucking obvious. And then you have Pittsburgh at Baltimore or Pittsburgh at home against Baltimore. Pittsburgh obviously been a much better defense since TJ Watt has come back into the picture. And Baltimore's offense has looked absolutely fucking dreadful. And they're likely playing playing with Tyler Huntley at quarterback instead of Lamar Jackson. So those are my top four streamers of the week. Y'all got the waiver wire from me. Now go sign up for the subscription on bdge.co and that will get you your normal weekly rankings from me, which drop Thursday around noon Eastern time. So if you need some sit start decision help, I got you in the weekly rankings. Please go to prize picks. Go nail that Justin Herbert 0.5 passing yards. It's free money. It's free rent money. It's free mortgage money. It's free pay your Christmas fucking gift keep your kids will love you type money promo code bdge when you do it i love you i'll see y'all tomorrow